Chapter 6, Creative Environments. Things that need to be considered when you're creating an environment for young children are things such as physical space. I'm going to list some of the things that they went over in Chapter 6 that you need to consider when thinking about building a classroom, um, moving into a classroom, and making it your own space. Acoustics are important. The flooring heating, light, and ventilation, light sources, is there running water, do you have sinks in your classroom, storage, chairs and tables, what size chairs and tables will you need for the age group that you're going to be teaching, shelves, windows, paints, plants, are they safe, do you have safe um, art materials, safe plants to put around your classroom, pipes, radiators, are they covered, wall plugs, hangers, hooks, fire exits, furniture arrangement, there's a great deal that needs to be considered when you're setting up a safe and um, creative environment for young children that they are allowed to explore, but it's also important to think about all the things that can go wrong if the proper materials and furniture and things aren't put out for them. When considering the arrangement of space and equipment, you need to consider the age and developmental levels of your children. Are the size and height of the furniture appropriate for that age group? Are the number of centers you have appropriate for that age group? When thinking about supervision, it's the teacher's responsibility to be able to see all of the children all of the time. So you want to make sure if you're dealing with very young children like twos that you don't have super tall shelving that is set out into the room in a way that prevents you from seeing them. If they're down low on the floor working at close to a shelf and something were to happen or someone were to bite them, and you weren't able to see that because the shelf was too tall and it wasn't, for example, maybe against the wall but standing out into the room, that's a problem with your line of sight and it's not acceptable to tell a supervisor, a principal, a parent, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened, I couldn't see the child. Um, is your classroom flexible? Can you change it around and make it new and exciting with the same materials that you have, but changing things in and out, moving uh, furniture around just to make it new and different? Traffic flow is something that has to be considered as well. Sometimes people like to put everything against the, the outside walls, but what, what happens when that when you put everything around the outside wall, you have a huge open space in the middle. If you have a large group of children and a big open space in the middle of the classroom, there's going to be tumbling, there's going to be places to run and to wrestle and to roll around on the floor. Not that those are always bad things, but a lot of times that can get to um, lead to chaos, which, which can then get out of hand. So you want to strategically place all your furniture so that you can, kids have to kind of go around and there aren't these large open areas and big straight runways from one side of the room to the other. Think strategically about how you want children to move through the classroom. And then you need to make sure you allow for a spot in your classroom for some personal space for a child. For the child that's just not ready to wake up in the morning if they come to daycare early, or for the child in preschool who has had too much of friends and people in their space and are having a really hard time coping, that they just need some private time. And that can be just a bean bag in the corner. Um, again, not some place you can't see them all the time, but just kind of a more secluded area that they're kind of away from the classroom and all the chaos and the other students. Again, here are a couple more videos that um, I don't think I can set up as a link in this PowerPoint presentation where I do this voiceover, but if you could copy and paste or write down the address and watch the um, videos, they're really interesting classrooms. Um, not everyone's going to be able to create a classroom like the ones that are shown here, but they give you some neat ideas of when you're thinking about space, uh, furniture, and how to arrange your classroom. When thinking about activity centers, you want to make sure that children can learn in the space that you've given them without a teacher being right there helping every single second. So are the materials out where the kids can reach them? Are there um, maybe step-by-step -step instructions? Are there materials that can always be used by children? Can the children interact with the materials and the other kids in the classroom? Can they develop skills and knowledge while in these activity centers? Can children learn through direct contact with all the materials? And you want to consider the area of personal and active exploration so that kids aren't just going and sitting and listening to 
for example, and maybe at a computer center, um, a video? Are they able to explore actively and learn more about what's in that center? Something to consider or what centers do you use currently or have you been in a classroom in the past that uses or from your own experience, maybe when you were in preschool or kindergarten, what centers were used? And then how would you expect someone to be able to shake those centers up so they don't become mundane or old? What can teachers do to keep housekeeping a lively place for an entire school year? How can you change places like that, like the science center, housekeeping, um, dramatic play, blocks and trucks? What can be done to those to keep them current and fresh every few weeks or every month or so. Think about that. Some of the considerations about activity centers might be where, when, the numbers of kids, the types of centers, how materials are organized, and is it convertible? Is it flexible? If, let's say, you are in a private preschool at a church, and on Sundays, that space that's your classroom has to be a Sunday school classroom. Can you kind of fold your shelves together, flip them around, hide things? How flexible is that space for becoming something else? If you have an in-home daycare, you may not always want your home to look like a daycare um, on the weekends. So are, do you have things that can be kind of convertible and flexible spaces? When thinking about this selection of equipment for your centers, some things you want to consider are, are your designs simple of the equipment? Are they versatile? Are they stimulating? Are they easy to use and durable? Do you have the proper amounts of items? What about when things don't work? How are you going to be able to replace them? You want to make sure that your equipment are things that encourage cooperative play, that they are safe, good quality, and most importantly, that they are kid-sized. This was a scenario that I did when I taught this class face-to-face. -face. So my question is, um, you might have some cleanup problems in your classroom. What are your suggestions for a solution to this problem? And what do we know now about transitions that alerts to the problem here? Think about the scenario and think about how you would answer these questions. 